Books and boxes is about when you're moving out of your house and uh, you're, you know, because you're separating and uh, you just don't understand why, why just, you know, leaving everything empty doesn't make the other person feel as bad as it makes you feel. And uh, there's a little bit of ego involved there. And, uh, but the hurt is real, so the song is too. friends we're in Chelsea now on West 20th Street we're gonna pop in the Sean Horton gallery Peter Gallo, Blood and Flowers. Hello, do I have to wear a mask? Okay, thank you. in my belly 2012 to 2022 it's a spray paint oil on linen and staples on a cutting board well I believe I recorded some views of one of Peter's show, shows at the Horton Gallery when they were here on, or here in Chelsea. Gosh, about 12 years ago, something like that. This is titled, All Tomorrow's Crucifixions, 2021 Oil and Collage on Plywood Cabinet Doors, 72 by 48. Actually, I may have seen one of Peter's shows when the uh, Horton Gallery was gosh, down on Essex Street, somewhere on the Lower East Side, even before they moved over here to Chelsea. Anyway, uh, well, Peter's work always stuck in my mind, and uh, well, I've got to know him a little bit since then. 
and uh, I think he's a very nice guy, nice intelligent guy. This is titled Blood Drive. We're going to spray paint on bake pan. 2020. And I believe Peter lives up in northern Vermont. And I think he teaches up there. He may even teach at a Catholic school, something like that. And, uh, well, I've always appreciated his of abject materials that he works with and found objects. It's titled My Modernism. 2018, oil on bed tacking, ticking. Okay, so this is an example. Uh, I think one of the shows I saw, he did a whole bunch of what he was calling at the time pirate ships. So this is kind of along that theme. So, uh, he likes to work on found fabric, but rather than just, uh, well, like this piece, stretching it like a normal, traditional, conventional canvas, he sometimes just staples them onto a board. Actually makes me think of someone that's uh, tanning a beaver hide or something. It's titled Winter Kill 2019 Oil on Canvas. Also I was looking at the, uh, the sign-in book and seeing that uh, some very interesting people have shown up to see the show. Raphael Rubenstein, Amy Silman. There's some uh, pretty influential people in the, the New York painting scene, so uh, I think Peter's got a lot of fans. Also, uh, I like what Peter's doing with the text. I think he's even uh, kind of expanded his his use of text lately, and uh, well, if you've been watching the Calm Report for any period of time, you know that I'm kind of a, a fan of the use of text. It's titled Happy Painter 2013, 2021. Yeah, so uh, a lot of Peter's paintings have been worked on for years and reworked, and uh, I uh, see some of the pictures that he posts on Instagram, and he's got a nice studio in Vermont, but it's got all kinds of things that he's brought in and saved, and paintings that are stacked and being reworked or looked at and thought about. Also, uh, Generally, Peter's got a pretty uh, unique color sense. This is an interesting piece. It's titled Heaven 2022. Oil on found chair. Here again, we're just using the chair as an excuse to have something to stretch your canvas on. And I guess you could probably take that off the wall and sit on it. Let's see if he's got anything on the other side. Okay, that is 37 and a half by 16. So see, this is about as conventional as he gets. 2019, 2020, so we got, and that's just, ironically, is also the name of the painting. So 
So we've got our uh, found frame. It's old and decrepit. We've got some uh, rock canvas that looks like it's been stained. Maybe it sat out in the the thaw of the mud season out in Vermont for a year or two. And we got its partner here. Well, I am a, a fan of uh, eccentric painting. Painters that have a little uh, different take on uh, aesthetics than what is being pumped out of the art schools by the thousands these days. And uh, I think Peter is one of the examples of people that has kind of gone their own way. And uh, living out in the, the wilderness. Titled Devotion, Kamer Blue. And this is great, this is part of a wooden box that's got a little ruler printed on there. And then we've got our text that's been squirted out of a, it's like a little, maybe it's a syringe or something, on the butterfly wings. Okay, this is a uh, kind of a large piece for Peter. Est tu blessé? I guess what that would be something like, are you blessed too? Something like that. Uh, I actually asked Peter where he got this uh, palette. I called it kind of a bubblegum pink. But, um, a lot of mileage out of it and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of that might be influenced by Philip Gustin it was a painter that somebody said he had pink eye okay so I think one of the great things about um, working like this where you're just kind of putting things together stapling them onto some kind of a frame or structure is that uh, it makes you reconsider the whole idea of what a painted canvas is, what it can be. Okay, and here we've got more text. That's too blessé. And then he's actually let the, left the canvas kind of hanging free at the bottom there. Let's look at this piece. It's not driving and crying. one of the the other artists that uh, Peter kind of makes me think of is Andrew Musulo who was also kind of a uh, eccentric artist uh, it's not like he's a uh, hermit or a shutaway he lives in the Bay Area but uh, he spends a lot of his time collecting things that uh, garage sales and estate sales and uh, collecting things. Okay, so we've got our painting of the person with the tears coming down. Okay, so this one they worked on from 2017 to 2022. And that's 32 by 24 by 13. It's 
titled Sunday Painting. Again, we've got the text. A decrepit piece of plywood. It's like some pretty nice linen though, but stapled on there. You can probably glues them. And I like the, um, the variation in the thickness of the impasto and the pedimenti. Like, uh, some of these pieces, the way that he's using the text and kind of designing the text as blocks of the composition is approaching concrete poetry. My mouth tastes like flowers. Well, an unstable to found rosewood frame, 19 by 27. Okay, for some reason these little sections here kind of make me think of handprints. Yeah, so I like the, uh, the way Peter combines the rugged, discarded, found objects that he paints on, and then the, uh, the urgency of his paint application. Okay, we'll look at another one of the sculptures. Okay. Idolton in autos. This oil under burlap staples plywood. Wool sock and shoe. I wonder if that's Peter's shoe. Does that look like about a size nine and a half? <laughs> oh. So a lot of these have got the uh, Catholic representations of crucifixes or ecstasies. It's almost like a strange cult fetish. this flatters perit mundus 2018-2019 oil on cradled plywood Peter's actually kind of uh, expanded his palette. He's got some things that are going in different directions than I was expecting. James Calm reporting on Blood and Flowers by Peter Gallo here at the Sean Horton Gallery. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can subscribe. We like subscribers. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, reviews, and suggestions below. But as always, we just ask you to say,
Thank you. Pink clouds. Thank you very much.